here to join me on stage for the next to last round of presentations are Katie Dixon, VP of Marketing and Excellence and Integration at General Mills, and Pascal Lanou, Head of Mobile Business and M-Commerce at Voyage SNCF. Would you two join me here on stage? Katie, glad to see you. So, rock us, Katie, please. Am I on? All right. I'm going to switch that up. Wonderful. Well, I have a few slides that uh, I'll bring up if I can, and just wanted to have a chance to uh, talk about how we see mobile at General Mills. Uh, as Tim introduced me, I have been the, the head of marketing excellence, but I actually right now also run three P&Ls, including Old El Paso, Betty Crocker, and Hamburger Helper. And so I can tell you from um, specific P&L ownership how we look at mobile in terms of our marketing campaign. And I would say that I, that I look at mobile and packaged goods as really being the perfect combination. Packaged goods are all about simplifying people's lives, enhancing their lives, that's exactly what mobile is too. So a match made in heaven. From the minute our consumers wake up, which many times is with their mobile phone, they are starting their day of planning, trying to get as much done as they possibly can, and integrating products in their life that are helpful towards that. So here our typical consumer, Claudia, wakes up at 6.30, and the very first thing she has is her phone. We find that over 60% of people now sleep with their mobile phones. I'm not sure if that's a good or bad thing, but that's what we find. So she wakes up, she hits snooze, and then it's time for her to get ready. And Claudia actually uses an app um, from her local uh, beauty uh, supplier where she has been able to actually download her personal look as well as her outfits. And this beauty app tells her what color of makeup is going to best complement that. So as you can see, she's looking fabulous, having already been given advice from her mobile phone on how to look her best for the day. From there, she goes into planning her day, and she's about to make breakfast, and she sees from her refrigerator that she's actually low on yogurt, so she needs to make a mental note to pick up yogurt. But rather than a mental note, she'll use her smartphone. So here she can quickly download the fact that she is short on yogurt to her shopping list, which will become relevant later in the day. As she's interacting with her kids, of course, they're interacting with their mobile devices. More and more, this is becoming the norm, not the exception, exception for everyone in the family to have a mobile device. And here, her family is wanting to interact with one of their favorite products, which is Grand's Cinnamon Rolls. And they actually um, can use some simple animation where they pull up their tablet and can interact with the character behind Pillsbury Cinnamon Rolls. I'll show you this. Roll the video. We find that we're able to really drive a lot of brand loyalty when we can interact with people in their homes in unique ways that feel very personalized to them. This is an example of that. So now Claudia is going about her day, and one of the things that we want to do with mobile is just to surprise and delight her with unexpected um, offers. And while General Mills does not sell generally direct to consumers, we usually sell through our retailers, there are some opportunities for direct sell. One of those is offering special deals you can't get in the grocery store. So for example, when we have new products, we many times will make sample size. And we either hand out the samples for free, or in this case, we've actually given Claudia an offer mobily where she can buy one of each of our new 15 products by a sample size for only $10. This got a great response from folks and actually triggered a faster start rate on our new products than before we had used this sampling technique. Now she's headed out to her car to go to work, and of course she uses her phone to start it remotely. She lives in Minnesota, where half of the year we're under the snow, so we like a remote start to the car so it can warm up before we get out there. Now she's at work, and she's living in a four-screen world. So yes, she has her PC screen. Yes, she has her mobile phone. Yes, she has her tablet. So she's using them all simultaneously and using them according to how beneficial they are. So when she sees a QR code on some documents that come by, she snaps in that on her phone and is able to learn more about those products. 
Over lunch, she's interacting with her coworkers and expressed to her friend Joe that she's gonna be hosting a brunch the next day and is looking for a great recipe for that brunch. He pulls up his tablet where he's able to show her a video of how to make his favorite blueberry muffin surprise, um, which she then takes from her phone, grabs and downloads the recipe for, and adds the items that she doesn't currently have to her phone so that she's able to uh, make sure that they're on the grocery list. She also was reminded as she pulled up her grocery list that she has coupons for a few items that might be expiring soon, so she needs to quickly get to the grocery store to, to get those um, purchases. The next thing she does is she uh, realizes that this recipe called for milk, and she isn't sure if she has milk or if she needs to pick some up, so she quick does a download with her fridge to find out does she in fact have milk on hand, and she does, so she does not need to add that one to her grocery list. Her workday is done, and now she's off to do a little bit of grocery shopping before she gets home. Um, for a while, we were concerned uh, as a CPG whether or not people would truly use their phone in the grocery store or would it just be something they'd use beforehand. But we find that nearly 50% of people use their uh, phone while in the grocery store. So they're looking up nutrition information, they're checking on the best deal, where to shop, um, what they can uh, uh, pick up to go with a certain recipe. So there is a lot of use of that, which is terrific. So Claudia gets to the store, and lo and behold, the near-field communications start kicking in, and she gets some location-based information. So it turns out that there is a rush hour deal going on at her local grocery store that she has now been offered. She loves that, and of course, based on her purchase behavior, they've offered her something that would be likely something she'd be interested in, and she loves that, so that's on the list. She then pulls up the app of her grocery store so that she knows how she can quickly navigate up and down the rows to find exactly what's on her shopping list. So this guides her through the store so she can get in and out the most quickly. And as she finds the aisle she's looking for because she, cereal is on her list, now she's at the moment of truth. What brand will she buy? So she looks over the different options, refers back to her phone to figure out which one she has a coupon for, and decides that Cheerios looks like a pretty good option for her. She knows she can save a dollar, and as she hits the uh, QR code, she's able to find out that if she eats Cheerios, she's actually able to lower her cholesterol by 15 points if she eats it regularly. So health information has turned out to be a really, really big deal for people in terms of loyalty and driving purchase, so that's something that we use quite regularly on our products. While she's there, she also sees that she can get a free sample of a different flavor of Cheerios, which she thinks, hey, that sounds kind of interesting, so she goes ahead and snaps that as well. When you have your mobile phone with you, your kids are never far away, they know how to use it, and they're never afraid to ask for things. So Claudia gets a uh, message from Hannah saying, hey, Mom, can you pick up some more of our favorite fruit snacks? So Mom runs over to that aisle, and she sees that one of the fruit snacks has the uh, loyalty program that she belongs to called Box Tops for Education. Box Tops, if you buy that product, will then give money back to the school. So she chooses that one and heads off to checkout. Once at checkout, her phone again becomes very, very important because she can use her mobile wallet to actually pay for the items, which of course she's thrilled about. It saves her time. She can also tally up how many box tops she has available for her school. And she has a choice of either clipping the coupons or doing it remotely. And of course, she would prefer the time-saving way of doing uh, the remote. Um, I've also noticed other retailers are getting very creative in how they're using checkout. Um, in the U.S., J.C. Penney's is a major retailer, and they actually have gotten rid of all of their cash registers, and they just use iPads now. And I've also seen that at the Apple Store, if you want to buy something, you can either use the traditional checkout, or you can use the Apple Store app and snap the UPC code, and once you've snapped it, then all you have to do is pay for it very easily through your iTunes account. So you can be your own checkout register. So checkout is becoming very mobily enabled. So Claudia is now ready to head home where she can restock her refrigerator. And of course, the refrigerator can now keep track and knows that it is fully stocked on yogurt. The kids, of course, are playing mobily, and, and I must say that for any marketer who thinks that mobile is maybe not something they absolutely must do, I would say look at the kids between the age of 10 and 20. Everything is mobile. They are going to expect that marketing, everything we do is mobile, and that of course they can purchase things that way. So I feel like right now we're doing a lot of experimenting, we're learning, and we're advancing, but with the next generation, I think it's gonna be an absolute must. 
So obviously, you know, downloading games, kids are very comfortable with making purchases, um, at least mine are, on their iPads and, and such, even if they're not supposed to. Um, Claudia ends her day, again, mobily. She's got her pad as well as her husband. One of their kids texts them and says, hey, glad that you chose Cheerios to lower your cholesterol, making everybody feel good. So as you can see, when we think about a day in the life of a consumer, it is all about being able to reach her with the right information at the right time at the right place. And honestly, that means being mobile. So as if you are a mobile tech company and thinking about how you might be able to increase spending by CPG companies, I would just offer you a couple things. The first is, if there's a consumer benefit, we as CPG are interested. We're all in the business of serving our consumer. And so what is the benefit? Secondly, I would say give us an opportunity to be able to show, show our consumers what our product benefits are. The more you can do this in terms of um, recognizing that, yes, we still mass market, but we want to be able to do very tight, targeted marketing again, the better. The third is, you know, let's start small together and ramp up. A lot of the things I showed you were little experiments we did, and as soon as we then knew how to do it, now it's something that we can scale up. And then lastly, know that we're still really excited about mobile. You know, we know that we're going to try some things that aren't going to work, but it's an absolute must for CPG to be able to operate within the mobile space. And so we want to um, launch and learn and iterate uh, along with technology companies in order to bring this to being part of the mainstream. That's my comments for now, and I'll look forward to uh, now introducing Pascal to also give his comments. Thanks a lot. You make my job Thanks. much easier. So hi everyone, I'm Pascal Lanoz, uh, in charge of the mobile business and I'm commerce at voyagesncf.com. Uh, Katie just one thing. As soon as Claudia travels to France, please tell her to download my app, you know, and if she takes a train, she can book tickets with my with our mobile mobile app. So uh, just, we have visitors today, so everybody do not know voyagesncf.com. Voyagesncf.com uh, is, uh, in terms of turnover, with, uh, with more than 3.5 billion, the first uh, digital commerce company uh, in France. And I'm in charge of the mobile business at Voyagesncf. Uh, before talking and sharing with you about enhancing tools, uh, I'd like to share some key figures and data info and great data about our customers. First of all, as you can see, more than two visitors out of 10 are what we call Mobinote. It means 20% uh, of our audience uses a smartphone or tablet to consult our offer of services and products. Uh, this year, in 2012, we will have sold something like um, four million uh, train tickets, which is uh, the double as we did last year. So it's a three-digit uh, growth from year to year with the mo on the mobile. A very important thing is as well that 25% uh, uh, of our customers, once they try uh, our mobile app, they are exclusive mobile customers. We're going to see to see why just uh, after this slide. 20% of our uh, customers, mobile customers, are brand new customers for VoyageSNCF.com, uh, which means they did their, their first trial with e-commerce with their mobile, with m-commerce. Uh, it's young people who just got 18 and can buy uh, online for the very first time, or some uh, working guys who do not, uh, any, do not have an easy access to internet and use a smartphone to have access to, uh, to the web. So mobile is still a, a great channel to recruit new, uh, new customers. A very quick focus about uh, the profile of our customer. As you can see, it's, uh, it's a typical profile for a, a channel which is not, uh, which is not mature uh, yet. So it's a, a, a young guy, 35 years old, living in a city. It's really typical for, uh, for a young channel, a young selling channel. Remember the e-commerce, 10 years ago, we had the same customer profile. Just to have a very quick look as well uh, of our downloads, we are very proud to, uh, to announce uh, 5 million downloads, uh, mostly on, uh, on iOS. 
and uh, iPad, which we have a new uh, iPad app since uh, last year, and it's already represents something like 20% of our mobile, mobile sales. Customer focused again, uh, which is very interesting to observe, to note, is that uh, our mobile clients have a very different behavior. Uh, almost the half of our mobile client, client customers sorry, are last minute bookers. Uh, which means we will have to identify which tools can make this last minute booking even easier and we have to find as well some tools, some tools to help them to uh, anticipate. No? Yes. I'm going to introduce you right now some tools and functionalities we are already using or we intend to use in the future to uh, make, uh, to leverage, to enhance our mobile business. Uh, first of all, the first big jump uh, uh, we could observe was thanks to the DMAT, what we call DMAT, as we use the QR code uh, instead of our train tickets. Uh, it's, it helped us to, uh, it was our biggest uh, business jump anyway. What we intend to, uh, to use as well in a close future is to use uh, coupons, thanks Passbook for instance, or within the, our mobile app. It's, we are thinking as well about uh, uh, getting digital uh, loyalty cards and so on. Uh, to be transparent with you as well, we started an NFC experiment, which was quite difficult to, uh, uh, to how to say, we had a, a lack of adoption. It's a technology which is very interesting. Maybe we haven't found yet the right use for our client. Another thing which is very interesting to share with you, I think, is uh, the way we try to be uh, time and location responsive. Uh, we are thinking about developments which will uh, help us to be location responsive. Geofencing, for instance, is something we, we want to, to be working on, just like uh, sending messages depending on your location. If we can identify that you are going to pass your train, we can send you messages to tell you, hey, here, change your ticket and take the next train for, in the next train, for instance. Or the opposite way, we can identify you are already within the station and uh, the train you booked is leaving in two hours and we can propose you to leave earlier and to make a very fast change. The other thing which is very interesting and it's the very first time we are working on this is to be time responsive. So we are selling train tickets and we were thinking uh, actually when I need to read my ticket, uh, the information is need, I need is not the same just before leaving or and it's not the same information as I need when I read my ticket two or three hours before leaving. So we are going to have train tickets within our mobile app, uh, which will be time responsive, which means the information they are going to deliver won't be the same according to the time you are reading them, which is uh, a very important uh, point, a very important point for us, and I'm sure this is something you can think about. Finally, when and where uh, I need you is as important as why I need you. And this is, um, this should be something you should have in mind when you develop new tools and new uh, functionalities for your mobile apps. We were asked to be very mobile specific today and talking about tools, but there are as well great functionalities, not really tools. You have to be thinking about when you develop uh, your presence on mobile, when you develop mobile apps or uh, website. First of all is uh, to be thinking about touch browsing. The biggest mistake we can, uh, we can see today is that when people do or, uh, or develop a mobile app, they are really thinking like, finally, my finger is replacing the cursor on my computer. And this is a huge mistake. You really have to anticipate and to be thinking about the way, finally, people are touch browsing, are browsing, are surfing with their fingers on a smartphone or on a tablet. We developed a very special tool regarding this, which is called Price Calendar, which is very interactive and touch-browsing oriented. 
one of our next steps next year, it's uh, innovation will be as well focused about voice browsing, which is quite logical when you think you are used, your clients, your customers are using your smartphones. So remember my hand, my fingers are more than a cursor. The other thing, it's not really a tool as well, it's more functionalities. It's do not personalize, but hyper-personalize your smartphones, uh, especially when you, have, when you use native, native apps, allow you to personalize the content and uh, to, stock, uh, to save data about your customers. Uh, this is one of the uh, best uh, feedback we have from our customers, is the way they can uh, customize uh, their mobile app. For instance, you can save all your personal data all the data about your family, friends, and even pets, and you just have to click on the picture and you book a train ticket for, uh, for everyone. The, uh, this is very important to, uh, we thought that people were really uh, using our mobile app as soon as we allowed them to personalize, to customize the app. As I say, the more I use it, the more it looks like me. Then, uh, is that you on the picture there? Yeah, it's actually just, I don't want that people get it wrong. The biggest picture, it was me before, actually, before, before today. You have undergone a facelifting <laughs> yeah. since then. Yeah, I'll be, I'll be looking like that back after the conference, I'm sure. So, finally, uh, we are really under yeah. pressure by our customers because you have, we have to be always faster. Uh, our next move will be to shorten, to, uh, to make the, uh, the purchase uh, funnel even shorter and uh, to personalize, to customize the, fu the funnel as well. Uh, the, the needs of, a young, of young people using booking train tickets are different from a working guy, for instance, and they will have uh, personalized and customized funeral, uh, purchase funerals. And it will be possible to book a train ticket within three seconds. Well, it was... <laughs> I'm finished, I'm done actually. It wasn't that easy to talk English just after you, Kit, Katie, and I hope people, you could get me right today. Okay, well, thanks very much, Pascal. Great. These, uh, these were two very good presentations, I think. Um, by the way, talking about using your fingers, um, you realize that um, if, if you can actually tell if a person is over 30 or not. Ask them, how do you ring a doorbell? Do you use your index finger or do you use your thumb? If you use your index finger, you're over 30. Because the under 30 crowd is the Nintendo generation. They grew up using their thumbs as the basic mode of uh, navigation. Yeah, um, I, I like this, this hyper-personalization thing you were just talking about. Um, how far can you take that, theoretically? I mean. Obviously, you knew your customer very well as well in, in your presentation. How deep does this go, and, and how do you achieve this kind of hyper-personalization? Well, from my perspective, um, we have websites like, for example, BettyCrocker.com, where the website changes uh, constantly based on what the preference is of the person as well as their social network. So um, I find that my consumer wants things that are relevant to them, but they also want to know kind of voyeuristically to look into what are, what's popular other places. So what recipes are they making here and there? And to be able to kind of peek into other folks and um, you know get ideas outside of, so personalize, yes, but also give me a peek into what other people are doing. Um, and I may be interested in that as well. How about uh, using social media sites to do that? We were just talking um, with a gentleman from Air France KLM. Uh, they're doing a, a Facebook page where I can actually um, choose my seat in the airplane um, based on the fact that maybe one of my friends is in the plane. And I said, well, this is wonderful because then I'm going to always um, befriend beautiful women who are on the flight and get seated next to them. <laughs> 
Is that something that you would think about too? Yes, actually, this Where is do something I sit in the train? We, this is something we already do uh, on the web, which is, so you don't pick or choose the person you're traveling with. It's just that when we push some special offers, uh, special prices, we indicate you if, uh, if you can use these tickets to visit one of your best friends. Well, if Facebook friends are best friends, this is another question. But uh, anyway, we socialize the offers. Maybe you we get are to pushing meet them first to, time. Yeah, you know? yeah we, <laughs> at least at least you can meet your Facebook friends. But we are personalizing the, these offers, these special offers, according to your searches, according to uh, your purchases as well, and according to your location. And we will pers customize these offers on mobile according to your Facebook friends as well. Okay. Actually, I remember last year I was drive, uh, taking the train to Hanover to the Tsebit, and I checked in on Foursquare. And immediately one of my friends said, well, hey, I'm sitting in the, the, the next, tra next uh, car. Why don't we spend the, next, uh, the, the rest of the journey together? That was fun. You could sort of do this kind of matchmaking too, couldn't you? Yes, that's really what we are working, working on. It means we identify it right now, where are my friends, where are living, where my friends are living, and in fact, uh, we could identify which friends uh, of mine are traveling to the same city as I do or are traveling within the same train as I do. Okay. Um, Katie, be honest, how much of that stuff that you showed us in your video and your, your presentation is science fiction? and how much is reality? So everything that I showed is based in experiments that we are either in the middle of or that we have already done. Most of them are small scale. As I said, that's really the way that we learn is to try something small and then once we learn from it, decide whether or not we're going to scale it up. Um, and sometimes we learn you know, that, that it was a great idea and other times it seems like it really had very little utility, in which case um, probably not worth pursuing. So each of these are things that we are pursuing, which is why I wanted to share them. Of course, we're in France here and, and France is part of Europe and uh, there is this, this perception that lots of stuff that you can sell Americans just would never fly here. Do you have any international experience with uh, the kind of stuff you are showcasing here um, for multinational audiences, or is this a pure play American um, marketing? You know, thing? I think a lot of it is relevant, and I'll use couponing as kind of the example. Um, couponing is not something that has uh, been strong in Europe. Uh, in the United States, we all get our Sunday newspaper, and there's a bunch of coupons in there, and you clip them out and you know take them and turn them in. Well, that has not been the case in Europe, and so couponing wasn't very popular. But now that most of the coupons are becoming digital, it, both in the U.S. Uh, as elsewhere, I think there's a lot of learning um, on where that goes in terms of marketing to consumers. And um, from our European offices, um, we're getting a lot of calls to our Minneapolis headquarter on how does this digital couponing work because it's a huge benefit to consumers and retailers also like it because it can differentiate them from the guy down the street in terms of the discounts. And you can offer it to people before they actually get in the store to actually drive people in store. So I would say that you know on couponing, the, the learning curve is starting in, in Europe and I think it will actually become quite, quite popular um, accelerated by what we've learned in the U.S. Well, Groupon was a big success, a success here in Europe, too. So, yeah, maybe we actually will learn uh, to love the coupon. Um, we, you were the second gentleman today who has mentioned the, the uh, stressed traveler as a prime target group. Do we also have stressed shoppers? You know, I would say that anyone who's a mom knows the answer to that, which is yes. <laughs> Um, I've, I found it interesting that, you know, when I looked at who does online shopping, my hypothesis was going to be that men were going to lead that trend because of all the electronic gadgets they seem to enjoy. But it was actually quite the opposite. Um, moms actually over-index on actually purchasing using a mobile device. And I think that's because she's the most stressed, she is the busiest, she has got to do 14 things all at once with the kids hanging on her and a boss and, and everything. So um, I, I think that uh, they are definitely a stressed shopper and the utility of what you can bring can really, really bring loyalty. Mm -hmm. I would like to remind you and the audience that you have these, I think you still have the machines, or have they been collected? 
No, so there are a couple of them still here. If you have questions you would like to ask us here on the stage, you can use this uh, iPad thing to do it. But we also, of course, have the young gentleman with the microphone, or at least we used to have him. Nah, there he is. Okay. Uh, if you want to use more traditional methods of communication, just flag him. I can't see you, so uh, you know, wave to him, and he will make sure that we uh, hear you here. Um, you said near-field communication is something that is difficult, and you yeah. haven't really been able to, to uh, make a success story about that. In your presentation, you showed NFC as almost you know, a, a, sort of a basic uh, technology. Is there a big difference here? Well, well I, think some, I just see someone ask the question about NFC and the experimentation we, we, we did. Actually, it was a very, u a very simple use case. Uh, it's, uh, you arrive at the train station, you haven't booked yet, you just put your smartphone you know, close to an NFC uh, field and it pushes you the, the express booking of the ticket for the train, which is just about to leave. Uh, we launched this experiment with Android users exclusively in the train station in Paris and in Lille in the north of France. And to be honest, we, uh, it has been quite hard to recruit uh, users uh, willing to take part to the experiment. Uh, not that they, that they didn't want to, they were not equipped to, uh, to participate to this experiment. That's why we have to to do it bigger on other operating systems than Android, for instance, and the new uh, terminals, the new phones, smartphones coming on the market right now in France will allow us to, to try a biggest experiment about this. Uh, I think uh, using NFC is going into the right direction, but when you, uh, when you are right too early, you may be wrong as well, so we have to wait until the market is really mature for this and that the mind as well uh, of the customers is mature about NFC. It's uh, an exception because most of the time the customers are in advance uh, compared to us, but this time they need time in France anyway to better understand uh, what they can do on the potential of NFC. And um, in the US, so NFC is being used in uh, retail grocery, but it's not everywhere. So it really is leading on the West Coast. So the experiment that um, I talked about was with a retailer on the West Coast near Silicon Valley. And as you can imagine, the adoption of technology, the understanding of what that can do um, was advantaged by where we chose to test it. However, we know that there are always lead markets, there are following markets, and there are trailing markets. So we do try to do our experimentation where it has the best chance of giving us learning, and that's what we did in this case. And our next step is to try to get other retailers to invest in this capability, um, because it isn't something that necessarily they understand from the get-go, and so having a real-life case that then we can take and help people learn from is kind of our test and learn model. Of course, I live in a country, Germany, that are world champions in data protection. And uh, Germans tend to lie awake at night and worry about what people might actually be pulling off their mobile phones through near-field communications, or it's the reason that RFID did not fly in Germany, it hasn't yet. Um, in America, we don't have that problem, do we? You know, I think it's less so, certainly, than in Germany. Um, I would say that it's just like any relationship you establish, you get what you give. So if I'm willing to give you information and you respect it and don't sell it to others but give me value back, I'm probably going to give you more information. So we really think about it as a relationship with our consumers and make sure that what we're asking in terms of information um, is then returned fivefold in terms of the value that we give. And I feel like if we ever um, break that relationship, they will no longer be willing to trust us with their information. So it's about trust. Yes, it's about telling why uh, people should give you information. You get what you give, as Katie and uh, Katie said. And uh, you know, it's like when you have ask people to subscribe to your newsletter. If you don't say what they will get through your through your newsletter, they won't subscribe anyway. So if you are if you are asking for data or access to some information, you have really to say clearly why and what they get for that. I still have no questions here on the screen, but I do have a question. No, I have a microphone, at least, for any of you who are interested in 
getting a question out. Do I see any hands up? That is not the case, and we're running out of time anyway, so um, actually more a, a final comment. Um, when you said people actually sleep with their mobile phones, uh, that worried me. <laughs> Does it worry you? Well, it tells you how important that is in their life. I mean, honestly, you know, the, the surveys would tell you that um, people are willing to give up almost anything except their phone. 75% of people would give up drinking rather than their phone. 50% would give up coffee rather than their phone. And 22% would give up sex or brushing their teeth rather than their phone. Now, I think those two may be related. If you don't brush your teeth, probably the other deal isn't happening. But, you know, this is a big deal. This is, th this is you know, they want it more than shoes. So mm. to sleep with it, I think, is almost, nobody wants to feel disconnected anymore. They don't want to miss anything. It's the world of, you know, I want to share everything I'm doing. I want to know what everybody else is doing. And I always want to be connected. And so I think that is kind of where it's headed. Well, the, we did see the picture in your video of the, Pair, the couple lying in bed, each with their um, iPod in front of them. I think in France that's different, isn't it? Well, it's more on your couch than in your bed that you use your <laughs> iPod. That's the only difference, actually. Okay, well, great. Thanks answer. very much, Katie Dixon and Pascal Lanoux, for your participation in this very informative and very um, entertaining panel, if I may say so. Thanks very much.